Today we're going to be talking about how to find the Jacobian of the transformation. And in this particular problem, we've been given a parametric equation defined by the equations x equals e to the negative r times sine theta and y equals e to the r cosine theta. Now I've written two by two up here because you'll notice that in our parametric equation here, we have two equations x and y, and they're both defined in terms of r and theta. So we have two variables x and y in terms of two other variables r and theta. So in that case, we have two variables by two other variables. When we find the Jacobian of a system like this, what we're gonna be doing is taking the partial derivative of x and y with respect to r and theta. And we're gonna do it all at once with a matrix. So when we've got equations like this and a two by two situation, we're gonna be looking for the partial derivatives of x with respect to r and theta, and the partial derivatives of y with respect to r and theta. And when we have those four, we can plug them into this matrix in this layout here, and then evaluate the matrix to find the Jacobian. So what we'll do is first find the partial derivatives of x. So we'll take the partial derivative of x with respect to r first. And remember when we do that, we'll be taking the partial derivative of this equation for x, treating r as a variable and theta as a constant. So in this case, if theta is a constant, then sine of theta is also a constant. And this sine of theta is essentially a coefficient on e to the negative r, and r here is our variable. That's really no different if you imagine, for example, the number three is a constant. That's no different than taking the derivative of three e to the negative r, because this sine of theta is just a constant, like three would be if we had three e to the negative r. So just keep in mind that sine of theta here is a constant. And when we take the derivative, therefore, we don't need to use product rule, we just take the derivative of e to the negative r, which we know is negative e to the negative r, and sine theta will remain as a constant attached to this term here. Now we'll take the partial derivative of x with respect to theta, and this time of course we'll treat theta as our variable and r as a constant. So in that case, e to the negative r, if r is a constant, will be a constant, and therefore e to the negative r will act as a constant coefficient on our sine theta term here. So that's no different than, for example, 3 times sine of theta, where 3 is a constant coefficient. So you can think of it as just being a constant coefficient on sine theta. We know the derivative of sine is cosine, so what we'll get here is e to the negative r, that'll stay as a constant coefficient, and then cosine of theta. Now if we want to take the partial derivatives of y with respect to r and theta, we can do so. When we take the derivative with respect to r, we'll treat r as the variable and theta as the constant, and here we'll get e to the r cosine theta because cosine theta will be a constant coefficient on e to the r, and the derivative of e to the r is simply e to the r. If we take the partial derivative of y with respect to theta, again treating theta as the variable and r as a constant, the derivative of cosine is just negative sine, so we end up with negative e to the r sine theta. We pull that negative sign out in front and we have negative e to the r sine theta. Now we can take these four and plug them into our matrix, which is the formula that we've written above here. So notice that in the upper left-hand corner, we have the partial derivative of x with respect to r. That'll always be true, so we'll take negative e to the negative r sine theta, and we'll plug that in there. Then here in the upper right, we have partial derivative of x with respect to theta, so we have e to the negative r cosine theta. Then in the lower right, partial derivative of y with respect to r we know is e to the r cosine theta, and that leaves partial derivative of y with respect to theta, which is going to give us negative e to the r times sine of theta. Now that we have everything laid out in our matrix here, we can go ahead and evaluate the matrix. What that's going to turn into is the multiplication of the term in the upper left multiplied by the term in the lower right minus the multiplication of the term in the lower left multiplied by the term in the upper right. So we'll take negative e to the negative r sine theta and multiply it by negative e to the r sine theta, so negative e to the r sine theta, and then we will subtract e to the r times cosine theta times e to the negative r cosine theta. 
And when we multiply these together, notice a couple of things here. First, we'll get this negative sign and negative sign here to cancel, and that'll become positive. e to the negative r times e to the positive r, well, when you have like bases, you can add the exponents together. So negative r plus r is zero, e to the zero is just one, so that's gonna cancel away as well. And all we're left with here is sine squared theta. So for our first term here, we'll have sine squared of theta. Now for the second term, we'll get the same thing here. Again, e to the r times e to the negative r, we add the exponents together and we get e to the zero, which will just be one. So these are gonna disappear. And as you can see, we're just left with minus cosine squared of theta. And that's it, this is our final answer. This is the Jacobian of the transformation. When we have two equations like this, one for x and the other for y, defined in terms of r and theta. If you need help finding the Jacobian of the transformation for a three by three matrix where you have three variables defined in terms of three other variables, go ahead and check out my video on that as well. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.